Canadian-born educator, Dr. Lawrence J. Peter, once said, if you don't know where you're going, you will probably end up somewhere else. Dr. Peter, who died in 1990, was most famous for the Peter Principle, in which he stated, in a hierarchy, every employee tends to rise to his level of incompetence. In time, every post tends to be occupied by an employee who is incompetent to carry out his duties. Work is accomplished by those employees who have not yet reached their level of incompetence. In general, the Peter Principle said that anything that works will be used in progressively more challenging applications until it fails. One is most tempted to use what has worked before, or what seems to have worked before, even when it may exceed its effective scope, which leads me to wonder how many of us as teachers in the classroom are using what seems to work, but is actually backfiring on us, which leads me back to if you don't know where you're going, you probably will end up somewhere else. This is what the teaching methodology that we will be learning about in this course is all about. It is called Understanding by Design, or UBD for short. And it was developed by Grant Wiggins and Jay McTeague and published by the ASCD, formerly known as the Association for Supervision and Curriculum Development, in 2005. If you're interested in learning more about Wiggins and McTeague, you can find it in the resources section of this course. In basic terms, there are four key elements to UBD. One, what is our desired outcome for our students? What is the big, and I mean B-I-G, big idea that is encompassed in this outcome? What is an enduring understanding that can be said and thought about this outcome? Two, what deep probing or essential questions can be asked? Three, what are various activities your students can do in order to learn the intended. And four, how will your students show you, themselves, and others that they've learned it? That's UBD in a nutshell. For the purposes of our course, we're going to use the overarching topic of Tikkun Olam, repairing the world, as an example to further discuss the concepts of enduring understandings, essential questions, and something we call facets or evidences of learning and presenting the learned work. Think, what do you see in the photograph here? What do you think the intended goal outcome of the learning is? What is its big idea? Have you ever gotten that in your gut feeling where the tears well up for no apparent reason? Was it a song that got you? Maybe a piece of music, a poem, a piece of writing, a thought, prayer, creed? the expression of which was so meaningful, so resonant, that you felt it in your gut to your bones. That's what a big idea is. It is something that, in Nechama Moskowitz's words, quote, makes the angels sing. A big idea never goes away, is true for all time, and returns to your thoughts throughout your life. Can you think of any off the top of your head? A favorite big idea of mine is that without freedom, there's no education, and without education, there's no freedom. Think. Where can we learn about this big idea? Passover, of course, the book of Exodus, the Haggadah. But how do we wrap our heads around something this big? How do we teach an idea that big? The answer is in creating enduring understandings. An enduring understanding, or EU as it is often called, is a sentence or two that offers a particular proposition about a big idea. A good EU is characterized as one that includes being enduring, being a big idea, having lasting value beyond the classroom, a core process or idea at the heart of a discipline, abstract, being counterintuitive, and is often mister, has misunderstood concepts. Whatever an enduring understanding is, it is embedded in facts, skills, and activities that can be lifelong. Enduring understandings express what we want to learn about. Here are three examples of enduring understandings that are found in the URJ High Curriculum, which is also UBD. The first EU is about the big idea of Tikkun Olam and Gimilut Hasadim for first or second graders. The second and third EUs are for older elementary students. As you read these EUs, think of them as goals or outcomes for your students. 
what kinds of questions need to be asked and investigated in order for the students to really be able to grapple with the proposition that's in the EU. The second key element of UBD is the process of asking essential or probing questions and include all the components listed here. They can take the traditional form of a verbal or written question in the classroom, but they can also be expressed through many things such as role plays, demonstrations, exhibits. However the questions are posed to the students, they must evoke more questions, more thought about the ideas, and they have no right answer. We'll talk more about essential questions next week. When it comes to the third key element of understanding by design, the evidences of understanding, think Bloom's taxonomy. If you know all about Bloom's, bear with me for a second. If you do not know anything about Bloom's taxonomy, on one foot, in 1956, Benjamin Bloom headed a group of educational psychologists who developed a classification of pyramid-style levels of intellectual behavior important in learning. In the 1990s, a new group of cognitive psychologists led by a former student of Bloom's, Lauren Anderson, updated the taxonomy to reflect re relevance to 21st century work. The original Bloom's levels of intellectual behavior moved upward in order of intellectual ability from knowledge to comprehension to application to analysis to synthesis and finally to evaluation. It was constructed with nouns. The updated Bloom's moves from remembering to understanding to applying to analyzing to evaluating and finally to creating now being constructed with verbs. Most educators use the Bloom's taxonomy to define student goals and objectives for what they are teaching. What's great about using the element of evidences of understanding is that when one moves through explaining, interpreting, applying, having perspective, empathizing, having self-knowledge, to finally self-awareness, a clear and concrete relationship exists between the learning and the student and others. The learning is exhibited not in a vacuum, but in real life, and it is authentic. Look at each of these photos and think about all the possible learning activities that could be going on in class and out, by the way, in order to get to the outcome of your students holding a coat drive. What enduring understanding can be crafted? What questions can be asked? What do the students need to remember, to explain, interpret, apply? What perspective should they have? What will express their ability to empathize? In effect, what do they need to know, feel, and be able to do in order to hold a coat drive from start to finish on their own? Another great thing about working with the evidences of understanding is that these may be multi-layered in one set of threaded learning activities. In our example of the big idea of tikkun olam, making the world a better place, and the enduring understandings that doing gimilut chasadim, or deeds of love and kindness, can help us do tikkun olam, help us to be part of the Jewish people, and that we have a responsibility to do gimilut chasadim in order to sustain the Jewish community, we then need to be able to do something authentic in which our students are remembering, explaining, interpreting, applying, having perspective, empathizing, and becoming self-aware. In the photos, we could see that students are collecting coats for a coat drive. They are advertising their drive, they have decorated a collection box, they go to the clothing bank to deliver the coats, and they also get to see that people can come and choose a coat from the ones that were donated so students get to know that their learning about Gimilut Hasidim and their work was useful and relevant. This type of real-life activity in UBD is called the assessment. And the assessment has five components which spell out the word grasp. This is just an easy way to remember that an authentic real-life assessment is a presentation, a project, a product, or a performance that students engage in with real roles, in real situations, and whose audience is also real. The G, or goal, is none other than your enduring understanding, that statement at the beginning which is really your end goal outcome that you want the kids to internalize. So this is it. Welcome to Understanding by Design. During our four weeks together, I will provide you with an easy-to-follow format for placing your curriculum into the UBD model. We'll use some of the examples you've seen here to facilitate our learning. So remember, as Lawrence Peters said, if you don't know where you're going, you'll probably end up somewhere else, and your students will too.